Hi students, today I want to introduce to you the operational amplifier or the op amp for short. Um, so the definition is it's actually a basic integrated circuit. It takes an input signal X and this can be either a, um, a voltage or a current. It's going to amplify that X and it's going to output the amplified signal. So this amplification factor here, it's called the gain. And the gain can be um, a whole number or can be a fraction. Um, the op amp can use to magnify a, sim, a signal. It can be used to add signals, subtract, divide. You can even use it to differentiate and integrate. Um, the, the schematic symbol for the op amp, schematic symbol is this. It's a triangle. There's going to be inputs coming in here on the left hand side. And there's two types of inputs. There's um, an inverting input, and it's denoted with a minus, and there's a non-inverting input with a plus. So sometimes you'll see the plus on top or the minus on top, and um, these ones here are the inputs, so they'll always be on this side. And then coming out of the triangle here is the output, and this is going to be the amplified signal. And then sometimes you'll also see on the top and bottom of the op amp, You'll see a plus V and a minus V. Sometimes this will be labeled as VCC minus VC. And these are the power supply inputs. So these ones don't get amplified, but this is where you apply the power to turn the op amp on. So um, like I said, this is a basic integrated circuit. Um, it's, it comes in this dual inline package. So dual inline means that on both sides, there's going to be pins. So there's one, two, three, four pins here, one, two, three, four pins here. Um, we start here at one and then we go around this way to number the pins, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And um, these inputs are coming in on pins two and three. So this is going to be the plus input. Now this is the inverting, the minus, and this is the plus inputs. The output actually comes out of pin 6 and then um, the power supply inputs are on pins 4 and 7. So pin 4 is going to be the V minus power input and then on pin 7 is the V plus power input. Um, pin 8 is actually not connected so this is no connection. And then pins 1 and 5 are called offset null. And we use these pins when we have basically no input coming in here, so zero volts on both of these inputs. We can use off, offset null to kind of calibrate the output. Um, so we won't be using these in this class because this is just an introductory class, so we basically don't have to worry about pins one and five. Okay, so this particular package, like I said, is um, a dual inline package. Dual inline package. Um, that means it's an integrated circuit chip like this. Um, this one actually we're going to be using in this class is the 741 um, op amp. And you can actually Google the spec sheet for the 741 op amp and it'll give you some more specifications on all of these pins. So this is called a pin out diagram. So it labels all these pins and what they do. It'll give you some um, maximum and average values for um, what this op amp, uh, the operation region for this. And so um, I encourage you to Google the spec sheet, spec sheet for this op amp, which we're also going to do together later in the, um, the op amp lab. So now let's talk about these inputs specifically. So first of all, the important inputs are these, um, these are the signal inputs that are actually going to be um, amplified and then the output is going to be the amplification. So let's talk about those signal inputs first. So the signal inputs and these are on pins 2 and 3. Um, we're going to have, this is the minus and this is the plus, the minus input, um, it's called the inverting 
input. It's called inverting because whatever signal you put in on this line, the output is going to be the opposite sign of this. Okay, so if we have a negative voltage we apply here, their output's going to be a positive. If we apply a positive voltage here, our output's going to be a negative. So it's just going to change the sign of the voltage if the voltage comes in on this negative input here. So that's what we call the inverting input. Um, the positive pin here is called the non-inverting inverting input. So that means if we apply a positive voltage here, our output will also be positive. If we apply a negative voltage here, our output will also be negative. So it doesn't change the sign. It's non-inverting. Okay, so um, what else can I tell you? The if we have, let me just do a quick example. So suppose we have minus, this is the min, the plus and the minus. So you might see like the orientation with the plus on top or maybe the minus will be on top like over here. So suppose the, the gain of our op amp is four, then we have some input signal X. Let's say this X that's coming in here is like two volts or something like that. If it comes into the non-inverting output input, then our output is going to be um, two volts times our gain of four, which is going to be eight volts. Now the sign of this is positive, the sign of this is positive. Um, if instead we have um, an input coming in to the negative side, let's say the gain of this op amp is three, and we have an input of one volt coming in here, then our output here is going to be negative three times one, so it's going to be a negative three volts. Okay, so the sign of this is opposite the sign of the input. Okay, great, so those are our two inputs, the inverting and the non-inverting. So now, real fast, let's talk about these inputs that are on the top and bottom of the op amp to turn it on. So these are called the, um, the power supply inputs. Power supply inputs. And these ones are um, the positive power. So V plus power is, comes in on pin seven of our integrated circuit. Our minus power comes in at pin four of our integrated circuit. And like I said before, you might see this labeled as CC for common collector. So on some schematics, it's labeled as um, a V plus, VCC plus or VCC minus. And um, if you look at that 741 spec sheet, you'll see that for the 741 op amp, um, the maximum power supply is plus or minus 22 volts. So that means that to turn on this op amp, we would apply a plus 22 volts here and a minus 22 volts here. So it doesn't have to be 22, it can be like 15 or 12 or something like that, but the maximum we can put here is 22. So the way we actually apply a positive and a negative voltage to this, um, we can't just do this where we um, attach the positive side to the plus and the negative side here. Because remember, this is a potential difference of a positive voltage, and this would be considered zero. So we don't want to attach like 22 here and zero here. What we actually have to do, and we'll do this when we um, go to do the op amp lab, is we're going to attach a positive voltage supply to the top, and then this one gets grounded. And then to the bottom, we're going to attach a voltage supply basically backwards. So the negative side we're going to attach here, and the positive side we're actually going to tie to ground. Okay, so this is our DC voltage supply. We apply a positive 22 volts here, a negative 22 volts here, but that's not going to be the same power supply. You actually need two different power supplies, and this one you hook up backwards in that you hook up the negative side to the input pin. Okay, great. Um, so what is the significance of this? Well, it's not only used to turn the op amp on, but, and we'll talk more about this later, it actually is going to cap our output. 
So um, if we have some input signal here that comes out on our output, our output can be no larger than plus or minus 22 volts. Um, if it is, if we have some signal that's going to go outside of that, then um, we will be operating in the saturated region. So we'll talk more about that later in the module, but I just wanted to introduce to you um, that's the reason why we actually have a maximum here. And like I said, usually it's going to be like plus 15, minus 15, or plus 10, minus 10. It doesn't actually always have to be the same either. So um, that's a, a kind of a brief introduction to op amps. And um, in the next video, I will tell you about um, the non-ideal op amps. There's also an ideal op amp approximation that we get to make. So let me know if you have questions about this.